Welcome to the show, Emily. You have a huge passion for educational technology, which we love. Jeff and I feel the same. And you do work that is called asset management. For listeners who are maybe familiar with the concept of asset management, can you talk us through why it's important, why it matters, not only for teachers, but also for students and their learning experience as well? Absolutely. So asset management is really the practice of managing thousands of assets. And we think of assets as it can be laptops like Chromebooks. It can be iPads. um, It can be any sort of device that a student is using for educational purposes. So, um, you know, it's the tracking of the devices, the reporting if they're broken if there's a software issue, if they have cracked screens. Um, So the reporting piece of that is super important. You know, we want to make sure that the hands are in the the kids, the devices are in the the kids' hands being used and not being repaired. So we want to make sure that we're tracking the amount of time that the repairs happen so that we can make sure that the, the devices are, you know, being used in a timely fashion as well as, Um, that the kids have what they need in order to do their job, which is learning. Well, you just got me thinking about back when I was a digital literacy coach and we would do some workshop and training with parents and caretakers around helping your child understand like how to take care of expensive technology, why this is a good habit um, and, you know, why it's essentially like a skill set. And I remember there were a number of things that we were like, these are some of the most common ways we see devices damaged, you know, lost. Um, And I think that responsibility for our learning tools is really crucial. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering how, you know, I asked you about teachers and students, but is that asset management piece kind of the broader school community as well? Are you thinking parents and caretakers also? Absolutely. I think that it provides some great teaching opportunities for us to talk about the importance of taking care of those items, right? So in the past, we talked about textbooks and library books and how, you know, my mom was a librarian. So we had this thing where, you know, you treat the book like a, like a baby. And so we kind of have these teaching opportunities where we can do those same things with our assets, with our devices, you know, here's how we take care of it. When you put it in your backpack, you know, you don't slam it down. You want to make sure that all of your ports are facing up, you know, also something as simple as being like, you can't put your water bottle or your banana in the same compartment that you put your Chromebook in. And kids don't think about those things, right? So we just have to really take those opportunities to say, Here's a learning opportunity and we can show them, you know, if you do put your banana in your backpack, here's what could happen along with your your Chromebook that now smells like banana. <laughs> that that, <laughs> happened. Got a, yes. that yeah. happened. We've got a great yes. title for the episode. So every, yes. Like all the things I talk about, it's because it has happened. It's just yeah, like, you know, the the coffee says hot because, you know, somebody spilled it. But um, we talk about those things because they all happen in 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 our world in education for sure. Yeah, at, over at uh, Incident IQ, do you guys have data on say what grade level sees the most broken Chromebooks? Uh, do you guys see the data from individual school districts and be able to say like you know sixth graders and bananas are just like just don't mix sixth grade and bananas and Chromebooks. That's really funny that you say that, but we do have a way of of getting, we call them custom views and it's really how we do our reporting. And so we can pull reports um, based on different factors. Mm. So um, we could say hardware, um, you know, device hardware, and then we could say something like 
cracked screen, um, a cracked LCD, and then we could get a report and then we could throw in another filter that's by grade level. Mm -hmm. And you could see how many in a district in a certain grade level you had at that issue type, which is really kind of cool. You mentioned sixth graders. In my experience, it is middle schoolers. Yeah, Middle schoolers are kind of the worst at breaking (laughs) devices. So um, the district that I came from, we had 92 school locations and about 10-ish middle schools. And they were always our our highest flying customers for sure. And I would say that every school district that I talked to the IT department, that's exactly the same thing is it's just like middle schoolers. But I think this, this leads to, you know, Trisha's question and just the conversations we need to be having, you know, as, as teenagers take on more responsibility, AKA middle schoolers, how are we having the conversations that, you know, you've got to, you've got to treat these things and be respectful, you know, to your devices. And the thing I love is using something like uh, incident IQ, where you can track these things as a organization to see, okay, well, we can start predicting how many screens are going to be broken this year. Can we order that? Can we order parts ahead of time or what parts on these computers seem to be breaking the most? You know, that's where something like asset manage it becomes very critical. And then I love this idea of like, how do we have students support us with that? When can we show students this data? You know, Hey, you know that there are 700 middle schoolers in this, you know, in this middle school, let us show you some of the data of how many cracked screens we're seeing, how many computers are being broken, or how many keyboards we have to replace. And all of that costs either you money, your parents money, or insurance money, or the school district money in some way uh, when these things happen. How do we take better care of our devices? And I think it really can be this idea of using asset management as a learning uh, for schools. I think it is an incredible just incredible thing to look at and think about how do we take, you know, a lot of this data that usually is hidden from students and teachers and kept in IT departments and make that part of the learning process of, of supporting us in our, in our tech world. I kind of like that idea. And I love that you pointed out the fact of budgeting because for me, asset management is really big picture budgeting, you know, because when we think about things like Chromebooks, they have a certain lifespan, yeah. you know, a five and a half year lifespan, if you can get all five and a half years from it. Yeah, good luck, and right? so <laughs> being able to pull in that AUE date into yeah. Incident IQ and then being able to filter by that yeah. to see at an AUE date of October of 2024, we have this many Chromebooks that are going to date out. So that way we can budget and we can prepare for that in the future, yeah. you know, by being able to say, here's how many we have that are going to be in October of 24. Here's how many we have that are going to be in June of 25. We can look out and say, now we can budget for the future because we know we have to replace X amount. And then, you know, plus what, eight, 10% sure. with that, that break it, you know, that break point. So yeah. Yeah. it's a really cool way to be able to big picture budget for things. Yeah. That's so cool. You know, as we, we are in this really unique time right now when it comes to education and with everything that generative AI is, is really, you know, kind of pushing us towards, uh, you know, uh, just any thoughts on, on what you're hearing from IT directors or some of the, the pivots we need to make or even things that maybe you guys are thinking about over at uh, Incident IQ around how does AI play into some of this reporting, even as little as, you know, I can, I can imagine like, as in my, put my IT director hat on, it's been a few years since I was an IT director, but put my IT director hat on and being able to go to some kind of chat bot and say, Hey, I need the data on sixth graders who have smashed bananas on their computers and let it go in and grind through the data. Right? Like I can just ask it prompts because you're, you're saying like, and I get this in the old world, it was go to the filters and you can filter out by this stuff versus being able to tack, you know, talk in natural languages and have that data come before you kind of, what are you seeing and hearing from it directors around generative AI right now? I mean, I'll be honest. It's not a lot right now for okay. me personally, yeah. just because, you know, there, there are so, and you guys know this, there are so many things that happen at back to school time yeah. that we're so focused on that we have a lack of resources, a lack of technician, a lack yeah. of, you know, those things that I feel like when we think about what can AI do for us, it's, it's amazing. You know what yeah. I mean? But I feel like it may not be the focus 
at least with the, the IT directors that I'm working with right now, it's not the focus. Okay. Um, just because I think that they have so many other things that they're yeah. that's on their plate right now. Yeah. It's I think it's amazing and things that we can always use to help us in the future and to plan for the future. I think those are the things that that AI can help us with as IT IT leaders is, you know, being able to plan for the future and and ask those questions in in language is yeah. kind of amazing. Um, but like I said, for me, the people that I'm working with right now, we're just not there yet. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's very interesting. The couple of school districts that I've been working with um, and I've been able to talk, you know, we've been starting to use and look at, okay, how can generative AI even predict when things are going to be happening? Like things we don't think about, you know, yes. it's just this, it's these fascinating little things. And I think about this around, especially you know, this idea of Chromebook management, which is a huge issue and just computer management and management of assets in general, where all of a sudden it's like, Hey, did you know that 90% of your printers run out of black ink the week before Christmas? You might want to, you know, cause we just, we know this stuff happens, but you don't, you forget about it or you have a sense of it. And I can just see, you know, the way that AI can, can support us in those roles. But yeah, you're right. As the start of the school year, when we're, we're recording this at the beginning of the school year, as an IT director, you're just praying the Wi-Fi still works on day one uh, and all the computers actually connect to the Wi-Fi. That's where your focus is right now. And that the kids remember their passwords. Oh, right. Oh, password. Yes. I was and just at a school district where it took... It took 45 minutes. I was just at the school district. It was the first day back from teachers for this year. 45 minutes of my hour and a half session was teachers remembering their passwords and resetting passwords so that we could even use the computers. So I ended up only doing a half hour session and I'm sitting there with the IT department going around helping everybody reset passwords because nobody remember. That's a, that's a, that's a huge piece of it for sure. It is huge. Absolutely huge. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That makes me think the next answer to your question might be patience. And Emily, the question is, for our listeners who are maybe interested, curious about pursuing a career pathway with IT management, what's a skill or a mindset that you think is so critical for that work that uh, maybe folks don't realize going into IT management, like this is something that you will really need to be able to fall back on if you're going to succeed um, in this career? Do you have any thoughts on that? I do. It's flexibility. Um, you know, being agile and being able to adjust and adapt to whatever comes your way, I think is one of the most important skills you can have in IT management, whether that's being a technician or asset management or, um, you know, just helping teachers in a day to day basis. It's flexibility. Hmm. I love that. Yeah, I, t I totally agree. Over at the uh, Incident IQ website, you've got a lot of products that support schools, everything from ticketing systems to asset management systems. You've got, you know, events where you can manage rooms and reservations. Uh, if you had to pick one, like what is your favorite of all these products or the one that you say that when you're working with schools, you're like, this is the one that everybody's like, when the, when they see this product, they're like, oh my gosh, that's the product I've been waiting for. So for me, it's um, it's a premium app that we have, and it's called Enhanced Approval Process okay. or Enhanced Approval Workflows. And it is being able to take something like a software approval request mm -hmm. and uh, layer approvals on top of one another. So let's say the teacher wants to request software, and then that has to go to the principal for approval to make sure that, yes, that's something that we want to do in this building. And then it may have to go to networking to make sure that they have an agreement signed, you know, for student data mining or something like that. So then it needs to go to another person for approval. Then after they approve it, it may need to go to purchasing to make sure that, yes, we have the funds in order to do this. So um, then it goes to another level of approval. So with we write these rules that are based on mm -hmm. ticket statuses. And so when the when the ticket is approved by one person, it moves to a different ticket status, which then triggers the next rule for the next approval. And it's one of those things where it's really fun to work with. It's really fun to write those rules. Um, <laughs> and it also is automated. 
Mm. It takes that piece, you know, that piece of the puzzle that says, I have this piece of paper and I'm going to walk it to so-and-so's yeah. desk for them to sign. And then they're going to mail it to through the school mail to go to the purchasing department. Oh and it takes that process. And when I talk about it with people, they look at me like I've just opened up a world of possibilities. Oh yeah. You've just, I'm just listening to you and I'm just like, you unlocked, you unlocked like just stress <laughs> of trying to get something done. Right. It's like, you know, in the video game where you beat the big boss, it's like that. <laughs> You, you've like completed the boss level for enhanced approval workflows. And that's, that's definitely one of my favorites. Well, I'm wondering if that's, you want to sort of bring cool. that to life with, I know you probably have a lot of like testimonials and stories from folks who went from not having anything, you know, like a system like that in place to, okay, let's take some of this chaos. Like what you just described, if you didn't have a, you know, an automated process, you're talking about like days waiting, 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 oh, frustration. <laughs> um, can you, can you kind of tell listeners a little bit of a story that brings to life that idea of why having something like that? Um, you know, again, I think schools are so fast paced today that kind of explains like, this is why having a system, yay, having a system is really worth your time in setting up because I know there will be some folks saying, but Trisha, but Emily, but Jeff, we'd have to learn the system. Won't that be time consuming? Well, and I say, yes, that that piece of it, you know, is time consuming. But what's not? We get a lot of people that the world that they are living in is they send an email and, the, the you know, there's a person that gets that email and then that email goes to another person that maybe knows how to solve that problem where if you use Incident IQ, everyone has access to the system. It is a permission-based system, so you can control who has what permissions. But for me, communication and visibility over those issues is kind of a non-issue when you're using a system. You know, if you email that person, there's no way for me to get into your email. So if you leave or you're on vacation or whatever that looks like, I can't help you with your problem unless I have that email. Mm. And so with Incident IQ, it's it's we've solved that problem because everyone who needs access has access to the information that's needed. Mm. So that for me is just one small piece of, of the puzzle is visibility and communication. We refer to it as, you know, I, IQ is kind of your single pane of glass. When you look through that pane of glass and you see a big picture, here's all of the information that you need. That is the users that are contained in the system. That's students, staff, you know, everybody. It's the assets that are contained in the system. So who has what asset and is it functioning properly? And then on top of that, you have a history. So you, in theory, if a kid joins a district as a kindergartner and you use IIQ all the way through when they're a senior in high school, in theory, you can see every device that's ever been checked out to them, as well as any ticket that they have had. And then on top of that, if you use fee tracker and you show, hey, this kid didn't turn in their charger in you know, 2023, they owe $20 for their charger. Um, and then, you know, let's say they had a liquid spill in 2025. You can see that entire history on the user's timeline, which is really kind of cool. And then you can take that a step further, which some of our customers do. And they create these little custom badges that they drop into the user profile so they can see, oh, this kid's on their first offense or this kid's on their third offense or this kid has a big red X and we're not checking devices out to them anymore. So not only does it contain information, it also can be a very visual and easy way to show, you know, different things like they've paid for device insurance or they're on their third Chromebook of the year, you know, those types of things. So for me, um, you know, the visibility communication and then just also everything is in one point. We often hear from customers when I say, what were you using before this? And my two scariest answers are nothing at all. And spreadsheet. Or spreadsheets. <laughs> yes. 
And when they see what we can do and how we can combine that all in a very user friendly way, they're blown away. Yeah. Well, and what I love is your product is made specifically for K-12. You know, I'm over here on the website and I'm looking at, you know, tech and learning best of show winner at ISTE, the EdTech Awards, you know, cool tool awards. I mean, when you build a product that solves a problem that is specific to K-12, I think that to me is one of the things that I love is the idea around a lot of times in education, we end up taking a product that wasn't made for education and, and trying it. to kind of fit it, mold it, hack it, you know, and try to shove it into this box that is very uniquely K-12. Square peg, round work. hole. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it doesn't always work or it kind of works and it kind of works. And then you've got the one person in the IT department that knows how it works because they're the ones that had to do all the specialties to it. And you can never let that employee go because if they go, the system falls apart. Right. And that's where using systems like this is, is so essential. And especially things that are specific to K-12, you know, because for better or for worse, we are unique, unique entities uh, that just nobody else has to deal with a lot of the stuff that K-12 schools have to deal with, you know? And to kind of follow up on that, it's one of the things that I love most about I IQ is that the product is very customizable. Mm. So not only does it work for districts that are 500 students, it also works for districts that are 105,000 students. Yeah. So it's very easy to adapt it to make it work for you, no matter what you do in your district. Mm. Is the whole thing web-based? Is it all web-based? Yes. Yeah. So you don't even have to have servers now. It's all web-based, hosted by you guys. Yes. That's great. I just always love that. I just, the more servers I can get out of a server room, I just feel better about myself. I don't know. I kind of feel like if we have trouble with cloud-based systems, we have bigger trouble. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. <laughs> That is true. Well, and I'm guessing, true. Emily, you know, what? there are some schools you mentioned like the size and there are some schools where they don't have an IT team. Like sometimes this work is left yeah. to librarian or is left to like a vice principal or something. And so I'm guessing for that person also who was saying my role did not ever train me to be thinking about this. But now, like, I just am that point person. I'm guessing you all work with them as well. We do. Yeah. And so we have a team of people. We have customer support. Um, we have a phone number that you can call in and actually talk to a person. Um, we have email support. We actually do use our own ticketing system as well. Mm -hmm. So you can put in an IIQ support ticket and you'll have a person answer your IIQ support ticket, which is kind of awesome and amazing. Um, and then we also do have dedicated customer support um, managers as well, which is what I do, customer success. And so we work with districts and like for my job, it's really a lot about training. So how do we train you so that you can train your people to use the system efficiently? And then a lot of what I do also is talking through workflows and how can we best help you with that workflow? So whether that is using a certain type of custom field inside a ticket, I think a lot of times of like, I worked with a, a facilities maintenance department and they said, I need somebody to tell me when I can come in and work on this ticket. Mm. How do I do that? And I said, oh my gosh, you guys, that's amazing. We can make a custom field for you inside of this ticket that'll say, what's the best day and time for me to come and work? And it was multi-select. So they yeah. could pick, you know, Tuesday at 10, Thursday mm -hmm. at three. And they said that that was one of the best things that that they had done was being able to use a custom field and gather that information prior to the ticket being submitted. I so nobody else had to reach back out to them. They just automatically got the information. Yeah, I love that. Well, if you are a teacher that is listening to this episode, or maybe you're an instructional coach, you're going to go to your IT department and you're going to ask them how they do asset management. And if they say, well, I keep it all on a spreadsheet or what's asset management, uh, you need to send them over to incidentiq.com and get started. Emily, if, if a school district wants to reach out to you, what is the best way for them to get started or to start a conversation to see, just learn more about the products and what, what you offer? 
Yeah, I think the best way actually is to visit the website. Um, so we do actually have a way where you can um, chat on the website and get contacted, you know, that way. Um, and I really do think that's probably the best way. We um, we have a lot of sales representatives that are happy to help and introduce and demo our products to you. Awesome. Well, Emily, thank you so much for being here and for talking about Incident IQ. I think asset management is one of those things, uh, you know, no matter what size of a district you have, <laughs> you've got to know where stuff is coming and going, and especially in our world now, you know, in a post-pandemic world where every kid has a laptop, we know that districts went from managing, you know, computers for teachers to carts of computers, and now you've got one-to-one -one everywhere, and trying to keep track of stuff gets out of control really quick. You do not have a system that, that supports you. So uh, head over to the show notes. You can find out more over there along with all the links that we shared today. Emily, thank you for joining us and talking about Incident IQ today. Thanks a bunch. It's been fun.